How's it going folks? Thought I'd just show you something I found on the weekend in one of the garden beds out the front here that really piqued my interest. I was a little bit concerned at first but anyway I'll bring the camera down and give you a bit of a look. So what we have down here is our asparagus bed. It's actually the first wicking bed we have along our front fence. Uh, in the corner here we just have this um, cayenne pepper. But what I found on the weekend uh, I was basically just digging around and adding some fertilizer in here. Um, just some cow-ass and some chicken manure just to feed up the bed. Oh, and a banana skin I was eating while I was doing the gardening. But when I pulled back the mulch, I discovered a whole heap of this stuff here. Um, I'll bring some up and give you a bit of a closer look. What I discovered was what looked like basically mouse droppings. Um, I was really concerned that maybe some rodents had decided to uh, live under the mulch during the cooler season and well there you go there's one of the culprits there um, what it turns out to be is bush cockroaches yeah i was really really stressed to begin with thinking it was mouse manure the last thing i want is a garden infested with um, rodents but just in the center of the bed here there was actually rather deep so the only thing i can think is when i fed this bed up midway through the season i put in a whole I think it was actually a bag and a half of aged horse manure. A whole heap of these cockroaches have moved in, either been in the manure or come in from outside, and they've just feasted on it. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update. I've um, come back because it's a couple of days after I filmed. I actually don't think that this stuff here um, comes from the cerumen cockroaches, or what I worked out to be cerumen cockroaches. Um, I posted a couple of pics uh, earlier today online just asking people. Um, and the more I looked into um, just the size of the droppings and yeah, um, the amount of them, I pretty much will figure those little fellas aren't to blame. A lot of people have suggested it could be rodents. I can assure you there is no smell whatsoever coming from this garden bed. And the depth that it was at, um, I pretty much all disturbed it all today. But the other day I had to dig around and it's roughly around about anywhere between 30 to 40 mil deep in different areas of the bed. You know, 30 mils by one metre square, that's a lot of rodent poop and we will definitely smell it and see evidence around the rest of the patch. Also too, I mean, this mulch is that thick it's only probably about um, 30 mil thick at the thickest uh, inch and a quarter so there's no way mice could actually crawl under there in such great numbers without us noticing or seeing the mulch move I don't think so um, I have found a couple of the white bugs uh, bug larvae um, crawling around the front of the bed so I haven't dug very deep because I didn't want to disturb the asparagus root so what we might do is um, pop over to that corner over there it's about the only bit I haven't disturbed in this bed looking around and we'll dig deeper and we'll see what we find. It's also the corner where the, um, the asparagus died off early this season. So we might investigate around its roots and just see what's going on. So I've decided to dig down in the corner here just to see what we can find. And I have come across a lot of the um, cockroaches. Now yeah, they're all gonna bugger off on me. <laughs> and also a few of these um, grubs as well. So what I think is going on is it could be a combination of the two. Um, so here's a couple of more of these little cockroaches. So they're just small ones though. There are bigger ones hanging around in there. There's a couple, here we go. There's a whole heap of them just up near the surface there. So that's the numbers we're dealing with, all these little guys here. Um, so there are loads of them in here. Just down here in the corner, there is a mass of them. Here's another grub. These guys are mainly around about um, 15 mil long. Just going to dig down a little bit deeper and see what we can unearth. So there's another one of those grubs. And just go through and another one. And another one. So there we go, just from this little area, this is the amount of these beetle larvae that I've um, pulled out. So, yes, I definitely think that it may be these guys and not the um, cockroaches that are leaving all the scat on the surface. Now, it would be great to um, catch one of these guys actually making a deposit, but you know, I think I'll give them some privacy. I dare say that what's gone on is I'm just looking around the surface on the, um, the other parts of the bed because I didn't want to disturb the roots. Whereas over in this corner, um, this asparagus over here hasn't done too well. So I didn't mind if I sort of damaged the roots by digging around a bit. The crown should actually be just around here. There's another larvae and another one. Loads of these compost worms, so that's a positive. There's another one. 
So I definitely do think that these guys are now my main suspects. So I dare say that these guys are uh, feeding on the horse manure that went on and then probably coming down and feeding on any bits of the dead root. Um, just looking at this crown though, there's a few little green bits on it, so I don't think she's quite dead yet, so we'll just leave her alone. But yeah, I um, think I found the culprit. So these grubs will just go into a container and my parents can take them over to my sister's to feed to the chooks, because I really don't want them to go back into this bed here. And we might join up with the clip where I left off the other day. I thought while I'm out here, I might as well show you some of the other bits and pieces I've been up to this week. Uh, I've pretty much well cleared out a lot of the beds. So down the front here we have the um, ferns from the asparagus and also to the leftovers from the rosellas. They came out. Just down here we also have the sugarcane stems. Um, I tried to get some sweetness out of them but they're actually rather bland, not very sweet at all. And our juicer didn't do a very good job of it. So these guys here are going to be turned into compost. Um, this bed here we haven't done much with other than harvest and look at the pretty flowers. Earlier on during the day we're getting a fair few native and European bees on these guys and we're also getting a load of the smaller heads pop through regularly as well. We've probably harvested three or four lots off of these guys. Uh, over here haven't touched this bed yet. I'm sort of not too sure whether I will or not because it does look like we might end up with a few more um, pumpkins come off here yet. So, well, squash come off here yet, so I might just leave that bed be. I'll just feed it up with some compost and fertiliser. This um, Thai basil doesn't look like it's quitting anytime soon. The beautiful little flowers there, so I might as well leave it go. Over here, you saw these guys the other day. Um, the cauliflowers, they got some nice heads forming on them. Whoops, and I dropped my camera head. <laughs> there we go, that's a better view. So, it is coming along nicely. I'd say that'll be the first one we harvest. While I was here the other day, I fed up this bed here. This is the one that had the rosellas in it. Uh, a couple of the rosella pods actually exploded. So I didn't manage to collect the seeds from them, but they're probably all through this bed here, a few over this bed here, and probably some over in the next bed. So I'm, I dare say we'll end up with some rosella volunteers next season. Um, this bed here was fed up with some compost from out the back, as well as some of this chicken fertilizer, just this pelletized stuff. Um, I just, the, the current cage of compost I'm using, I haven't had great results with it. So I just thought I'd throw in some of the chicken as well as some of the calcium and minerals, rock dust minerals. This bed here had the sugar cane in it. Um, I pulled the actual plants out. They're just sitting over here actually. I'll just show you these guys. Um, I meant to post a, a request on um, my Facebook wall last night. Um, if any locals out there in YouTube land want some heirloom sugar cane, um, this one here's got a couple of viable corms on it, so I'd give that away as a whole. I just, for what we get out of them and the amount of space they take up, I'm not really interested in growing sugar cane. Um, it was a bit of a novelty idea at the time and I had a crack at it. We broke off some of these younger pieces and had a bit of a chew on them and they were sweet and all that, but just not something I think I want to grow out here. Um, in this bed, it uh, actually was rather low um, I don't think it had ever been filled up since it was first made. So what I did was popped in two wheelbarrow loads of compost. I actually dug them through a little bit. I don't normally dig through, but it was a little bit compacted down the bottom there. Dug it through and popped in some of the fertilizer and whatnot. Over in this far bed here, we have a bit of a mixed bag. We have the um, taro that I left in. I didn't harvest this taro out the front. Um, I noticed it had started to die back, so what I did was just leave it be and hoping it would send out some new shoots, and it certainly has. There's a few decent sized roots there, so I'm just going to leave them go and see if they grow if I leave them a little bit longer. Just down in here I thought I'd show you, this bed had originally turmeric in it, and as you can see I've obviously missed a piece or two because we have more turmeric root that has already decided to um, shoot. That grew up last year in the middle of the um, taro and I missed it. so. I have yet another planting of um, turmeric around the place. Uh, that's the uh, orange longer variety. Uh, what else? The only other thing I did was trim back a lot of the dead leaves on this banana tree. Um, it's a bit hard for you to see at the moment, but the afternoon sun is setting over in that direction and all the dead leaves were just blocking all the sunlight from making it down to this little bathtub uh, wicking root pouch garden. So I figured if I trim them off, uh, to let more light through. They weren't giving any benefits to the um, banana tree at all, so they're just down there for the time being, and I'll cut them up a little bit smaller and use them as a mulch around the base. 
And I also like to throw a fair bit of scrap in the middle there for it to compost down and feed as well. Just quickly, this bed here is going to have a mix of broccoli and collie in it. And the same with this one over here. And we'll probably pop a few other bits and pieces out in there as well. Um, see if we can break up the planting a bit. We do have a fair few brassicas in, um, these two beds out the front here and a couple out the back, but we really do like to take advantage of this time of year because during summer um, there's no way we could grow a nice tasty cauliflower like that. Um, it's just too hot for it and they tend to bolt to seed or bolt to flower very quickly. So um, yeah, if I can plant these two out, um, might even put cabbages in one. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have our full of brassicas and then yeah, wait all summer for next winter before we get the next crop through. Finding all that cockroach scat was definitely a big surprise on the weekend when I was feeding up the bed. N nothing I thought I'd ever come across to tell you the truth, but you know, obviously we're feeding them well. The other asparagus bed I'm sitting on at the moment, I checked it on the weekend as well and I found no sign of those little blighters in there, so I'm pretty sure that this one's safe. Uh, as for the rest of the patch out the front here, I mean obviously the broccoli is still going well, looking forward to the uh, cauliflowers. Those two spare beds, they will need to be planted out uh, by this weekend with some little brassica seedlings. It's a bit too late to start them off by seed myself, so I'll get some seedlings and pop them in. We've probably only got about two months at the most, eight to nine weeks of cooler weather before things start to heat up. I've actually already gone through my tomato seeds and picked out one or two that I'd like to try this season, see if I can have better luck than last season. So, yeah, fingers crossed while I can get them into the garden and before the Queensland fruit flies strike them. So I've had enough of this peak hour traffic behind me here, so I'm going to call it quits, folks. If you've liked this clip and you're into um, backyard farming, urban farming and that sort of thing, um, you can subscribe by hitting that little button up there and there's a little gear icon. You can click on that and then check it and you'll be sent a notification whenever we upload clips to YouTube. I do hope that everyone is well and happy and that you have enjoyed the clip and I'll catch you next weekend. No, this weekend with a ginger clip. Cheers, folks.